Channel 4 News. The 10 o'clock reports with Clarice Tinsley, Steve Bosch, Tom Riley at the Channel 4 Weather Station, and Paul Crane on sports. Good evening. This could be the night that decides the future of DART for years to come. A future clouded by threats from suburban members to pull out. More on that in a moment. But first... The Dallas Ballet tonight finds itself uh, center stage in an unexpected drama. Officials say they must raise close to $450,000 in the next week or close down. As Channel 4 Sue Keenan tells us, they are blaming their crisis on the state's economic crunch. The Dallas Ballet has enjoyed a season of artistic and critical success, though it is with great irony these dancers who work so well with illusion had to deal tonight with reality. Their company is balancing on the brink of bankruptcy. It's really disturbing. I mean, it's more disturbing, I think, for the city because the city loses part of its body. It loses a, a living art, and nothing can reproduce that. Officials with the ballet were tonight swiftly putting together an emergency fund drive. They need $450,000 by next week. Without it, they must close down. I think it happens for the same reason that, uh, that everyone is affected by the economic downturn, that we've had uh, a shortfall in contributions and fundraising and a slight drop-off in our expected ticket income. The tightening local economy has already claimed another victim in the arts community. It is with great regret that I must inform you that effective... Last month, the new arts theater closed. Faced with huge debt and dwindling contributions, they had no choice. But the professional dancers of the Dallas Ballet refused to believe the same fate could happen to them. Tom Clower began his ballet career here when he was only eight years old. We'll get through it. We have to get through it. Dallas has to have the ballet. They have to have the arts. Ballet officials seem to have faith the public will come forward with the needed donations, remembering the free Ballet Under the Stars series, the annual Nutcracker Suite, the important role ballet plays in Dallas. So we're going to keep fighting. Meanwhile, dancers are doing their best to prepare for a now questionable future production. They believe the show will go on. Sue Keenan, Channel 4 News. The Dallas Plan Commission has asked an Oak Cliff neighborhood group to make a return trip to City Hall in three weeks. The neighborhood group is asking the commission to rezone parts of Montana Street in Oak Cliff from retail back to residential. It's something that has never been done before in the city of Dallas. The action would stop the construction of a motel now being built between two homes in the retail zoned area. Dallas Councilman Al Lipscomb has referred to the motel as a so-called trick house for prostitution. Big D's building with the flying red horse on top was on center stage tonight. The Dallas landmark was unveiled after extensive refurnishing. It's hoped this historic building will be attractive to commercial tenants. The Dallas skyline is now dominated by skyscrapers, but the old Magnolia building was the first one. Completed in 1923, for years it was the tallest building west of the Mississippi with its 29 stories. As the state's economy sputters, business and government are cutting corners, cutting budget, and in many cases cutting jobs. Such is the case with one budget-cutting move in Dallas County. As Channel 4's Laura Randall shows us, it's a story of man versus machine. This is the time-tested way to record court proceedings. The reporter is typing in shorthand, and her notes will be transcribed later by computer or by hand. The rents were not perceived by SCI. They were... This is the newfangled way. All testimony is recorded on audio tape. Transcribers make a transcript from a cassette. Dallas County is experimenting with tape recordings because if they're reliable, they'll save the county millions of dollars. From $1 million to $2 million annually is the kind of savings we're looking at. That's the most substantial savings that anyone has proposed for the judiciary uh, in a long time. But dozens of court reporters who stand to lose their $42,000 a year jobs say the recordings will lead to mistrials. They say testimony often is inaudible, and with recorders, no one finds out until it's too late. We're talking about words and parts of sentences, and in the example of the statement of facts I gave you, a complete ruling by the judge is left out. You want to plead guilty, Mr. Brooks? This is an example of what the reporters are talking about. Do you want to take the four years, or do you want to have a jury trial? 
Judge Heck says the master recordings are clearer in most cases. His court has used tapes for six months, and he claims there haven't been any problems. Not only are the tapes sufficiently accurate, they're more accurate. And wouldn't you expect that? The commissioner's court wants to continue experimenting with electronic recording. And in the meantime, the Criminal Bar Association has started a study of its own. The lawyers want to know whether it's better to have a court reporter live or Memorex. Laura Randall, Channel 4 News. A group representing South Korean mills signed contracts today to buy more than four and a half million dollars worth of cotton. South Korea is the second largest market for Texas cotton behind Japan. The Koreans buy more than a million bales a year for the manufacture of clothing and fabric. Texas cotton traders call today's deal a great day for Texas. You have warehouses, you have steamship, you have railroads, you have truck lines, you have cotton gins, you have oil mills, you have machinery, banking, on and on and on. All of these things are involved in it. So to try to put a dollar tab on it as to what it's worth to the state of Texas, it'd be impossible to do so. Texas is the nation's largest cotton producing states and Dallas is the largest cotton trading center. Still to come from Central Texas, an All Points Bulletin prompts a manhunt for a suspected killer. I know I should be mature, Bobby. I mean, we just got engaged. But with this stationed overseas... It's only 18 months. Well, it's going to be the longest year and a half of my life. Saying goodbye is never easy, but with AT&T International Long Distance, it's easy to say hello. A 10-minute call to Japan can average just 95 cents a minute. Only AT&T keeps you this close anywhere in the world. Cosmos announces its final year-end fur clearance. If you act fast, you'll find a tremendous collection of furs reduced below our wholesale cost. It's happening this Friday and Saturday only during Coslow's final year-end fur clearance. You may never see so many furs reduced below wholesale cost again. This Friday and Saturday only at Coslow's. So act fast, because the fur is flying. Don't tell me. I know. An artist, right? Well, we're going to begin without her. Three, four. Hey, <laughs> must have been good. <laughs> Where were you last night, baby? Uh, can, uh, can I ask you a question? And Clang, too. Taxes that were supposed to have been temporary appear to be ready to become a permanent part of our lives. Today, members of the Texas House gave final approval to bills making the temporary sales and motor fuels tax permanent. If approved by the Senate and Governor Clements, the state sales tax rate would be fixed at five and a quarter and the motor fuel tax at 15 cents a gallon. House Speaker Gib Lewis of Fort Worth says the two measures still might not be enough to raise revenue, that more tax bills might be needed. That would set up, however, a collision course with Governor Clements, who has vowed to veto any additional taxing measures. Fifty miles west of Houston, in the town of Seeley, another Texas bank has gone bust. The Seeley National Bank was declared insolvent today. Bad loans are being blamed for the failure. The bank will reopen tomorrow under new ownership. In Houston, the Liberty also failed. Again, bad loans and poor management to blame. The former Liberty Bank will also get a new name and new owners. So far this year, 12 banks have failed in Texas. Did you hear the one about the traveling salesman? Actually, this one is no joke. A traveling magazine salesman from Forney has been freed from a Missouri jail after 11 months behind bars for a crime officers say he never committed. Michael Allen White was first charged with rape, then escape, but tonight all charges have been dropped says his grandfather, it's not the American way to treat someone just because they're from out of town and don't have any money. Near Austin, Bastrop County sheriffs have called off the search for a wanted killer from Missouri. Sheriffs from three counties were involved in the manhunt for Clifton Powell. He's wanted in Missouri for allegedly killing his uncle. The hunt for Powell began late yesterday after a Bastrop resident reported seeing a man fitting Powell's description. Sheriffs used bloodhounds and helicopters to track the suspect to the Lee and Fayette County line. Bastrop authorities say Powell has escaped their county and possibly the state. 
In the headlines at 10 o'clock tonight, some of the fallout from the president's speech last evening. As expected, the remarks ran along party lines. An example is that of Texas Republican Senator Phil Graham. They would say in an old western, Ronald Reagan is back in the saddle again. Even one of the, even one of the former national security aides who was criticized by the president last night had only good things to say. If you came all the way out to Great Falls to find somebody to play president bashing with you, you came to the wrong driveway. Mr. Reagan said he didn't know about the diversion of funds to the Contras in Nicaragua, but his brother Neil Reagan today said he'd bet the president did know, to which the president replied. My brother said that. Yes, he, he must... said you think there's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> I'll bet he's been I'll skin him. <laughs> On the whole, Texas Republicans say they think the president did just fine last night, while Texas Democrats weren't quite as satisfied. Tom, we're getting into the home stretch. Does it appear this great weather is going to stick around for the weekend? I think so. At this point, we're going to get the good weather on the weekend, and now it's flipped around, so just about the time you're going back to work, it turns wet. Right now, across California and the Pacific Northwest, they're picking up the pieces after a windstorm that blew through, battering trees, roofs, you name it. The storm caused power outages and some problems for travelers, too. The wind was so strong, it blew over some trucks. He was what you'd call a pilot's pilot. It was like he and his red Fokker were of the same spirit. Then you just went to roll out of your sight. And he always came out of the sun. I hear in America they've named a pizza after him. Must be a bloody good pizza. There's only one frozen pizza worthy of the name Red Baron. He was a legend, he was. There's no pressure. When you want something delicious, but you want something light. There's no pressure. From salads to platters, chilies does it right. There's no pressure. From a tender chicken sandwich that'll chase away your blues. There's no pressure. To a chicken frisco salad, I'll tell you, you can't lose. There's no place like chilies. No place else. For something light. No place else. Here, here, here's chilies. No place else. Fred Jones finishes his shift at the Phoenix Station. There's nothing that can stop him from heading straight to his favorite fishing hole. Well, almost nothing. Which way you fellas headed? Greensburg, sir. Greensburg. My, what a coincidence. That Fina, you got a friend. I think I just found the perfect topic for my thesis. Inside a Harlem street gang. Uh-uh, forget it, Jenny. That's too dangerous. Do you mind if I ask you your, a few questions, you know, about your gang, uh, what they do? I'll tell you what they do. They mug old people. Is she running late? Before the night's over, she may be running for her life. What if we need some protection? Look, if anything happens, we got all the protection we need. We do? Yeah, me! Share the spirit of laughter with the Jeffersons, Friday at 4. Some of today's weather is sort of a preview of things you have to come the rest of this weekend into the weekend at this point, so get ready for it. It's going to get even better. Local conditions right now show a temperature that's still on the warm side at 55 degrees. The barometer reading is at 30.24 and rising. The humidity is at 55 percent. The winds are coming in from the south at 8 miles per hour. Today's high reached 72 degrees. The overnight low was 38. The normals for this date, 64 and 42. The pollen count rose to only 413 grains per cubic meter of air, and we've had no precipitation within the past 24-hour period. Now, here's part of the reason why we've had no precipitation. Notice the cloud-free condition of all the state of Texas tonight, except for the extreme western corner of the western panhandle around El Paso. Some clouds have built up, but other than that, that's only just low cloudiness. All of it is to the west. How far west? Well, a fur piece, as we say down home, all the way at least west of the Rockies and to the Pacific Northwest coast, there is a bit of cloudiness tonight. That's part of a storm system. Now, the storm system is being fed by really a good and bad system. This is warm air that's pouring up from the southwestern coast of the United States and off Baja, California. 
It's having two sides and its characteristics in this way. It sets some record highs as far north as Montana today, those record highs pushing into the 70s across parts of Montana. A lot of people there saying, wow, we can use this kind of early spring. Meanwhile, though, they can't use the early spring in the Pacific Northwest where they're having a combination of avalanches caused by the heat and it's just putting the snow on the skids. And that melting snow is at the same time feeding some flooding conditions as it's continuing to rain in parts of Washington and Oregon. The rain really poured down around San Francisco Bay and certainly in the southern part of Monterey County where it rose to almost six inches in the past 24 hour period. And the winds are quite high too. Meanwhile, look at this. We're in the fair weather section of the, of the uh, high pressure system and tonight's low will go down to only about 44 degrees with clear skies. The winds will be mostly from the south at about one to 10 miles per hour the rest of this evening. Staying there throughout tomorrow afternoon and it's going to be fair and mild with a temperature or at least around 73 degrees. Now in the extended forecast, be ready for some still warmer temperatures, at least in the mid to upper 70s. That's coming up by Sunday. So notice that we're trying to uh, get on your good side here with one of the best weekends that's been forecast in recent months, much less in recent weeks. Better weather yet to come. Then early next week, look out, it does turn a little wet and, wet and rainy. Wet and rainy? <laughs> I hope not. Wet and rainy next week. Has to wet it. Yes. <laughs> No, it's good. Thank you. <laughs> At this hour, Garland City Council members are deciding whether to hold an April 4th referendum on a DART pullout. Last January, the council voted 5-4 to four to call for an election. Most were concerned that DART would run out of money building its $2.8 billion rail system before it reaches the suburbs. DART tried to ease those concerns by passing a resolution last week limiting debt and ensuring the suburbs that the rail system would be built. The council has been discussing the issue for about an hour and has yet to take a vote. Irving is another city unhappy with DART, but tonight the talk of their city council meeting is the reality of prison overcrowding hitting home. One way Texas jails are staying open is by shifting inmates to alternative sites like halfway houses. And as Channel 4's Richard Ray shows us, plans to locate one of those in a neighborhood there has created a furor. At issue is a vacant nursing home on West Airport Freeway. It's been leased by a nonprofit group called Volunteers of America. VOA currently operates a halfway house for early release convicts in a motel across from Baylor Hospital. VOA would like to move the existing program to Irving. Administrator Sherry Shaw says the proposed site meets zoning standards. And like it or not, VOA has a legal right to be there. These are regular people who are from Dallas. The vast majority are from Dallas who would be released to Dallas sooner or later anyway, and they are people who were sentenced on nonviolent offenses. The people who live on Glenlock Drive directly behind the proposed halfway house are not persuaded. A petition effort produced more than 1,100 signatures from residents worried about falling property values and rising crime rates. Uh, I believe they need a place to stay. Uh, I, I support that, but I don't believe they need to be in no residential neighborhood. Tonight, the City Council expressed its clear support for the neighborhood, passing a pair of resolutions aimed at blocking the proposed halfway house. It may well be headed for a legal fight. Other communities, other neighborhoods around the state of Texas are likely headed for similar conflicts. Under emergency prison legislation, the state has allocated some $2.2 million for more halfway houses. The prison overflow has got to go somewhere. Richard Wright, Channel 4 News. Residents in Mineral Wells are one day closer to being able to drink the water. Officials were hoping for word today about the town's drinking water supply, but there's no go-ahead, at least not yet. Laboratory results from Fort Worth on the water supply, which was contaminated by a gasoline spill, have not been returned. So bottled water is still the order of the day and night. Landry Stadium has kind of a ring to it. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's a possibility, uh, but it, right now it's only a possibility. But there's some people at Skyline High School who'd like to see the reality. We'll talk a little bit about that and a lot about Southwest Conference basketball. Men's coming up tomorrow, some women's tonight.
sports that affect you on Sports Scene with Paul Crane, Saturday at 6.30 on Channel 4. Next on All in the Family. And the best part of the whole thing, it ain't gonna cost us nothing, Edith. Which is to say, it's going to be absolutely free, or in other words, gratis. Of course, the cotton is owned by Barney's uncle, and Barney's going to drive us up there in his car. But eat it, we got to be ready and packed and, and waiting out in front of the house at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. In the morning? The morning is when 6.30 a.m. usually rolls around. Right? Share the spirit of laughter with All in the Family, Friday at 10.30. I'm Peter Rabbit, and I'm here with some of my friends practicing for the MDA Hopathon. Over 15,000 of my little friends in this area will be hopping for Jerry's kids in the next two months. So if you adult rabbits at home are visited by a child in your neighborhood, please pledge what you can. And if you little rabbits would like to hop for Jerry's kids in your neighborhood, call MDA in Fort Worth at 338-1024 and in Dallas at 661-3077. Or ask your daycare director about the MDA Hopathon program. It's amazing what little magic can do. The Southwest Conference gets a chance to forget some of its football problems for a little while this weekend as the basketball tournament gets played at Reunion Arena. The first game on tap will be defending champion Texas Tech against Arkansas. The Red Raiders, with a record of just 14 and 13 this year, may have some experience at winning, but that and 50 cents gets you a cup of coffee if you're not the best team on the floor. So I think it uh, helps a team to win, experience winning, and... Uh, you know what it is to go through that. But on the other hand, uh, I, I think it, uh, it's going to be tougher because I think all of our opponents will uh, realize uh, what happened last year, and I think they'll be up. The others have to be up. The only team virtually assured of making the NCAA tournament is TCU, which means any other Southwest Conference school wanting to go has to win in Dallas. We don't have a good, uh, very good reputation in this league for being a strong basketball conference. And, uh, and it's hurting us, and uh, the publicity that we get hurts us. And so uh, until we can change that image a little bit, I think, uh, I think it will hurt us. For us, it's a new season, and the only chance we have to be playing a week from now. Somebody else, it may be different uh, if they need a win or two, but uh, we're in that situation where we've got to win three games or it's over. TCU will play A&M tomorrow at 2.30, then SMU will take on Baylor at 6. The women's tournament continuing tonight. The top team in the country is the Texas Lady Longhorns, and that's Clarissa Davis, who's got as sweet a shot as you will see. The Lady Longhorns too tough again tonight. The final here, Texas 73, Tech 49, and the Lady Longhorns will get Arkansas tomorrow. Arkansas playing Houston tonight. The Lady Cougars are falling in this one. And number 15 in white, the one to watch, Arkansas, is Tracy Webb under the hoop where she'll get the basket and the foul. 19 points for Webb, and Arkansas will get at least one more game anyway. That again comes tomorrow night against Texas. The final here, Arkansas 96, Houston 82. Every conference in the country has a postseason tournament except one. The Big Ten says it doesn't need one and is talking about sending six of its teams to the NCAAs. Hard to say if they'll get six, but one which is going for sure is Iowa. The sixth-ranked Hawkeyes get 21 from Kevin Gamble tonight against Northwestern. And Jeff Moe throws in 20, including five straight three-pointers at one point. The final in this game, Iowa, 103, Northwestern, 76. The Rangers play what you might call an exhibition exhibition game today, losing to the Nippon Ham Fighters of the Japanese League, 9-4. to four. The regulars don't play much. Jeff Kunkel gets three hits. The Grapefruit League season begins tomorrow against the Detroit Tigers. Charlie Huff will pitch against Jack Morris. And those kids from Dallas Skyline High School are at it again tonight, out in force at the Irving City Council meeting, trying to convince the council to rename Texas Stadium Tom Landry Stadium. The Cowboys may be the only team playing there for a while, but the move is still a long way away. We have 20,400 and something signatures, and we're going for 80,000 more signatures, and it's going to take us a little bit of time to do that, but we want to do it before spring break in the first week of April. We talked to Coach Landry tonight about this. He says it's very nice. I'm not sure he really knows what to say about it, but when I asked him, have you thought about walking into Tom Landry Stadium and playing? He said, not really, but... I guess I'd better win there. I'd have to win. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, Paul. Thanks. Coming next, a sports story of a different sort. A convention in Dallas tonight catering to the sports-minded kicked off earlier this evening in a more, a rather most sporting way at the Anatole. This 
is a Safeway price bulletin. For seven days, Safeway has outstanding store-wide savings, like USDA Choice Boneless Beef Chuck Roast, priced right at $1.49 a pound. And pick up a super buy on Duncan Hines Layer Cake Mixes, 18 and a half ounce boxes, just 79 cents each. Plus, Safeway has nutritious U.S. number one russet potatoes, a great value at only 99 cents for a 10-pound bag. You'll find even more savings throughout every Safeway. But hurry, these special low prices are good through Tuesday only, and only at Safeway. If you drive like this, you may not want Gulf Super Unleaded. But if you drive like this, you probably do. Gulf Super Unleaded, the high-octane gasoline with high-tech tech relief. It cleans intake systems, including fuel injectors, better than any other premium. High octane and high tech tech volume mean high performance. Gulf Super Unlimited. Unlock the power. Tomorrow on the morning program, three soap opera hunks and beautiful Carol Alt. Mm, and opera star Placido Domingo and columnist Jack Anderson. <laughs> Carol Alt. I'm Ann Richards. As state treasurer of Texas, I love big money. On Sunday, March the 8th, we're going to return some big money to the people of Texas. People who have forgotten bank accounts and safe deposit boxes. Look for your name in the unclaimed money fund list in your Sunday newspaper. If you find your name, I'll give your money back. I guarantee it. Call 1-800-321-CASH. Several hundred people attending a convention at the Los Anatol had to run to check in, not to the hotel, but for a fun run around it. The Lowe's parking lot and hotel grounds were restricted to pedestrians only as 450 people sprinted around trees and shrubs. The annual race was part of the opening ceremonies for the International Racket Sports Convention this weekend, and if the convention members weren't too tired after the race, they might have jogged over to one of the world's largest fitness trade shows, which opened at Market Hall this evening. We could be hot putting it outside for tomorrow morning's breakfast, as a matter of fact. We're going to get some really great weather, so start out your day with about 48 degrees, sunny skies, and only light winds, and then it's going to get even better. Fantastic. The uh, Garland City Council still meeting. No vote yet on whether or not to hold a referendum to pull out of DART. That's tonight's news. We'll see you tomorrow night. Be sure to join Walter Evans at 6 a.m. with Ron Jackson for the latest news and weather. Appreciate your company.